Hello guys, this is Wits Lounge, learning made easy. And today we're going to be discussing an important concept known as isomerism. Mind you, this particular study is going to be shared into different talking points, which is likely to be found in different videos. So don't forget to like and subscribe so that you get notified as the videos pop up. So let's get into the study. What is isomerism? Isomerism is actually derived from two Greek words, isos and meros, which happen to mean equal parts. So defining isomerism, isomerism is a phenomenon in which different compounds possess the same molecular formula. A very good example is your hexose sugar. For instance, glucose. Glucose has the chemical formula of C6H12O6. Fructose also has that same chemical formula, C6H12O6. You notice that they are different substances. However, their formulas or molecular formulas are exactly the same thing. So let's delve into it to understand why this actually happens and the different forms of isomerism. So if you look at the screen, you will notice that um, isomerism is broadly divided into two parts, structural isomerism and stereoisomerism. When you talk about structural isomerism, structural isomerism is the form of isomerism in which different compounds would have the same molecular formula, but then they differ in structure. So when the difference is based on structure, you refer to it as structural isomerism. There are six types of structural isomerism, and they include number one, chain isomerism, number two, positional isomerism, the third one is functional isomerism, then we talk about metamerism, tautomerism, and finally, ring chain isomerism. These are the types of structural isomerism. So let's discuss them in detail. What is chain isomerism? In discussing chain isomerism, one thing you would always have in mind is carbon chain. Yes, the chain of carbon atoms. That's one thing you'd always have in mind. Now, chain isomerism is a form of structural isomerism in which there is a rearrangement of the chain of carbon atoms. It can only occur in compounds which have at least four carbon atoms, which means if the number of carbon atoms in the organic compound is less than four, chain isomerism cannot occur. Now, note, I did not say isomerism cannot occur. I specifically said chain isomerism does not occur in compounds with less than four carbon atoms. So let's look at that and understand how it works. So if you look at the screen, you would notice that I have, let's start with butane, for instance, let's use a yellow color. Butane is going to be structurally written as CH3, CH2, CH2, and CH3. So this is the least alkane that can exhibit chain isomerism. And what happens here? Now, to exhibit chain isomerism, the first thing is that you need to cut out or remove the terminal carbon atom, which is, when I say terminal carbon atom, I mean the carbon atom at the end of the chain. Once you remove the terminal carbon atom, or you could say remove a methyl group, you have a remaining chain here, which is on this side. Let me use another color to identify that. So you have a remaining chain, on this side now this remaining chain would have for butane this remaining chain would have one two three carbon atoms so what do you simply do you take this one you cut out and then attach it to a non-terminal carbon atom i told you that a terminal carbon atom is the carbon atom that occurs at the end so this is terminal this is terminal the only non-terminal is here so you attach this one you cut out to the non-terminal and you have this let's and you have that it's going to be CH3. So for the first compound, we have butane. But the second compound is, okay, let's fill this with hydrogen. Yeah, re remember that carbon atoms can only have four bonds. So we have that one is already formed here. So the remaining will be formed with hydrogen. So we'll have CH3 here. Uh, this is one, two, three. The fourth one will have to be attached to hydrogen. This is one, the remaining attached to hydrogen. Okay, so if we are to name this, this is going to be two methyl propane now we have other videos where we discuss how to name organic compounds so do look them up and that will be that okay so having said that um you would notice that these are actually two different compounds this is butane and this is two methyl propane but when you consider their molecular formulas it is this is four carbon c4 h this is 10 then here too you have Four carbon atoms, if you count the hydrogens, this is 3 plus 3 plus 3, 9 plus 1, 10. And that is an isomerism. So these two 
are referred to as isomers. It's different substances that have the same molecular formulas are referred to as isomers. So you have that. So you have that chain isomerism is simply produced by removing a methyl group and attaching it to a non-terminal carbon atom of the remaining chain. Non-terminal carbon atom of the remaining chain. Once you have that, you produce an isomer. Okay, so with that said, let's try out another one. Let's see the isomers found for pentane. So as we know, pentane has five carbon atoms. The term pent means five. So CH3, CH2, 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 and CH3. Yeah, this is like a structural diagram of pentane. Now, remember what we said. First of all, you cut out the methyl group. This is the methyl group we are cutting out. And then you have a remaining group of carbon atoms. This remaining group, you notice that there are four remaining carbon atoms. And we are going to write it out separately just to avoid confusion. So you have one, two, three, four. Now, take this particular um, uh, methyl group here and then attach it to a non-terminal carbon atom. Now, you can either attach it here or attach it here. If you go back to our study in naming, if you attach the methyl group here and here, it would give you the same thing. So don't forget to go and look up the video on naming organic compounds. Okay, so that's why we are going to just attach it to here to form this. And when we attach it, we would have um, CH3. Now let's complete the hydrogen atoms. We have CH3, CH, H2, and CH3. Now this is pentane. And it has five carbon atoms and 12 hydrogen atoms. Same thing here. This is not pentane. This is 2-methyl-butane. And it also has five carbon atoms and 12 hydrogen. Now, if you look at the structure of the second isomer, you will notice that we can actually still cut out a particular methyl group, this guy. If we cut him out, we can attach it to a non-terminal carbon atom, which is here. Okay, let's try that out. So I'm, I'm going to remove everything here and rewrite. Okay, so we we'll have, what we had earlier on was C, 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 C. Then we had two methyl, that's CH3, H3, H2, and H3. Here we have H. Okay, so if, for instance, we want to form another isomer from this, we simply cut this out, a methyl group. And then if we cut it out, we find out that there is a non-terminal carbon atom remaining in between, uh, that's in the remaining chain, there's one that is non-terminal. So you notice that this particular carbon number two is non-terminal. Non-terminal means that it is not at the end. This one is terminal, this is terminal, but this is non-terminal. So we are going to attach this to this guy. So let's get to that. Okay, so... um. That would mean that the remaining carbon atoms would be CH3, C, C, and then we had this guy attached here. Now, this particular methyl group that we removed can be attached here. And you have that. Another isomer is formed. If we have this, the name of this compound is going to be 2,2-dimethylpropane. This is, let's use this, this is 2-methyl-butane. Now, but if you consider the number of carbon atoms, you will notice that here we have C5H12 as the number of carbon atoms and hydrogen. Also here you have 5 carbon atoms and 12 hydrogen atoms, which means that 2,2-dimethylpropane and 2-methylbutane are both isomers. So you have that. Now when you simply cut out methyl groups and attach them to non-terminal carbon atoms of the remaining chain, you actually form an isomer of that substance. Now, there are scenarios for larger molecules where you need to start removing ethyl groups instead of methyl groups. That's when you're dealing with um, up to 7 or 8 carbon atoms. That's when you start considering removing ethyl groups instead of just methyl groups. So with that, you would notice that pentane has three isomers. And what are they? First of all, we have pentane. Then we have butane. Ah, sorry, not butane. Two methyl butane. And finally, we have two two 
dimethyl propane. In the case of butane, butane has two isomers. We had butane as an isomer. And then we had two methyl propane. Now, in the case of butane, you will notice that when we go to two methyl propane, let's let's draw that. Now, if we had decided to remove another methyl group, you will notice that there will be no non-terminal carbon atoms to attach it to. Yes, because this is terminal. And this guy happens to be attached to this guy already. So this becomes terminal. So in the case of propane, once you get to a propane base or a propane level, you find out that there is no other thing you can do. Uh, you can't attach any more to non-terminal because the only non-terminal carbon atom available is just this particular uh, compound here. Okay, so with that said, we move into the next one. So you guys should try out that of hexane. Hexane should have five isomers, as I said, for those preparing for with tertiary institution exams in Nigeria, you would have to note that for alkanes, the number 235. 235 is two isomers for butane, three isomers for pentane, and five isomers for hexane. So find the isomers of hexane using what you just learned, and then post your answers in the comment section. Hopefully, we will look into that.